Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 138. You're probably wondering who's sitting next to us. We have a guest here today, uh, Corey Massasak, who will be taking over for Kevin Kurz at The Athletic to take over uh, the Sharks what do you call it, the viewing duties, I guess, the uh, reporting Beat reporting. Duties. Beat reporting, yes, there you go. So uh, we're going to be sitting down and talking with him. Super professional, by the way. Uh, we'll be talking with him, and uh, I, I can't wait to jump into the interview. So let's go ahead and just do that. You ready to start the show? Ready. Let's do it. Iron didn't want me to say it, but I'm going to say it. Uh, you guys wished Kurz away, so it's your fault. But uh, very capable. I can't wait to hear uh, what he has to say here, and I'm actually excited to have a bit of a new voice. Kevin Kerr is doing the athletic for 10 years with the Sharks, so uh, getting some uh, some fresh thoughts, some fresh blood, and maybe a different way of reporting here. So, again, welcome to the Bay Area. Um, Thank you. I, we just want to give a, a brief intro here. Um, we've got uh, Corey, who's been working with the Caps uh, previously, and then he did some work with NHL.com, and then after that with the New Jersey Devils. That was most recently you were with the Athletic for the Devils, correct? Yep. Pretty much the last four seasons. Yeah. Nice. So uh, very experienced, obviously. So uh, brings a lot to the table. We're excited to have him here. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm really excited to be here. I just uh, just trying to you know find a place to live and just sort of get used to the everything around the city, and I'm excited. Nice. Yeah, cool. So, uh, actually, you got some uh, housing questions, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right into that. You get a lot of sticker shock when you come out here from the... You I mean, know, you're coming from New Jersey, New York area. So right. No, so, I, so I've lived in Manhattan for most of the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. And it was... On one hand, I've had people say, oh, well, you're coming from New York City. It won't be that big of a deal. And then on the other hand, I have friends who have like lived in California who are like, no, you wait. And like, <laughs> yeah, the first couple of days of looking for... <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, this is... Yeah, I thought I thought that you know, like looking for apartments in Manhattan was different, but this is it's a little different, yeah. Yeah, Manhattan, you get like a one bedroom that's smaller than here, for probably three, four thousand dollars, and that's probably what it's like in San Francisco yeah. and San Jose. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's definitely a little more, maybe a little more room. Like there's a couple of the places I've looked at have definitely been bigger than. My, I think my first, my first apartment in Manhattan when I had to move there when I was basically over like twenty seven years old or something, it was. It was pretty small. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been out there and visited a couple of times. Uh, yeah. One of my best friends, Brad, was up there for a while and he was he was bunking up with another guy in a one bedroom apartment. And it was, I'm not kidding about the size of this garage, maybe a little <laughs> bit smaller. And that's with a bedroom and a kitchen and a family room. I'm sorry, this what? This studio. <laughs> sorry. Studio. Okay. Studio. Sorry to break the magic. Yeah. <laughs> No, my my first uh, my first apartment in Manhattan didn't have a kitchen. Yeah. It was like wow. basically like a hallway that there was like a sink and <laughs> and a dishwasher and a sp- and, a, and a fridge. That was pretty much it. So a college dorm. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, actually, Aaron, uh, we we've done this before, and you you heckled me for it, but uh, you wanted to talk about the weather. Well, yeah. that was one of the things. Yeah, it's such great it's weather just... and so sunny, and it's been <laughs> raining the last two days or so out here. For those who don't know and yeah. aren't here right now. Right. Yeah. No, I, um, it's honestly, it's, it's been one of the things like you like weighing the pros and cons of, 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 you know, picking up and moving in the middle of the season and moving across the country. And like, man, every time I've been here, on, like, you know, covering games on the road or for a playoff series, mm-hmm. whatever, like the weather's just, it's, I mean, I, the weather in like Southern California is great too, but like, I'm not really like a super hot or super cold person. I kind of like it in the middle and so that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. You know, once it stops raining. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely in the right place. Like, yeah. Even in San Francisco, it's cooler because you get the yeah. breeze coming off and or foggy. Mm-hmm. And if it's like a nice day, there'd be 80, 90 degrees down in San Jose and it'd be 60 degrees in San Francisco or 50 degrees and foggy. <laughs> so it's, it's sunny here a lot. It's well, great. The, I mean, when the Devils were here a few weeks ago, um, I had like an extra, basically that was like a Saturday night game, I think. And mm-hmm. I maybe purposely made my flight back very <laughs> late on Sunday because I was... Maybe this was sort of in the works at that point, and yeah. I was just like, oh, I want to kind of hang out and walk around, see the city. I went up to Alum Rock yep. Park, mm-hmm. and yeah, I had like a shirt like this one. It was like sixty-five degrees out, and I had like a like a long sleeve. And I'm like, I, you know, walking around the park. Man, this is Sweat. amazing. Like, no, no, that's the thing. Oh. It wasn't. It was like, there's like, I mean, New York City is the weather can be pretty good there, but it's also like just really humid. Like, mm-hmm. just all the. I don't know if it's like the concrete or whatever. There's uh, every, the heat just kind of gets baked in there. And there were there were so many times when I worked at NHL.com where I would be out here during the playoffs, mm-hmm. like 
there was one one year I spent forty straight days in California. Wow. It was amazing. <laughs> I went back to New York and I I thought it was like on the face of the sun. I was like, this is the temperature wasn't that much different, but it was it's it's yeah. Yeah, the humidity so, kills. It's, it's awful. Something actually we've, we've brought up on the show before was uh, the weather potentially being a draw for, for players. Do you think that there's anything to that at all? Do you think players actually care about that kind of thing? I don't know. I mean, I think it's like one of those things, like once they get here, it's like they tell maybe they tell their friends, like, hey, man, this is... Yeah. But I, you know what? Like, I've always... And I know, like, some fans will get into, like, the whole, like, the tax thing, right? Like, oh, you know, yeah. Florida, Texas has the, the tax benefits. But, like, yeah... I've been to. I've spent a lot of time in Buffalo, just from you know playing the Devils and playing the Capitals, and their rookie tournament is up there, and the and the the NHL draft combine is there, and like players love Buffalo. Like there are so many. They they make it such a big deal about the fact that there are so many former NHL players living in Buffalo, oh, wow. and it's like why would you you're you're, an, you're a millionaire? Why would yeah. you live in Buffalo? <laughs> I mean, I like Buffalo. I you know I, it's one of my favorite cities to go to, but that's not if I had millions of dollars, that's not where I would. Live probably. Yeah. So. No, that's probably true. Yeah. Well, um, we're talking about wanting to uh, spend time in San Jose. Here we are. Uh, so, uh, covering San Jose, did you get any insights from Kevin Kurz? Obviously, Kevin Kurz was uh, covering the Sharks uh, prior to. So, I'm just curious, did he have anything to uh, to say to you, kind of uh, get you on your way to, to being here in San Jose? Yeah, I mean, I've, I mean, I feel like I text him about something every day or every other day. <laughs> yeah. I, you almost kind of don't want to be like, well, just. You know, you don't. You know, you don't want to ask for everything, right? You yeah. Just, you know, so like, but there, yeah, it'll just be like, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, I was just was working on something or thinking of work. Like, well, one thing too is like, I, I'm still sort of, kind of like, backtracking and trying to figure out what he's written in like the last six months or nine months or year. I don't want to write like something oh, that he just yeah, that yeah. he just did or, you know, and then or write something that one of the other one of the other beat writers has has just written recently. So, but yeah, no, he's he's been he's been great. Like just. And it is, it's kind of funny. We're not, it wasn't like a exact trade. Like, he, you know, yeah. it's not, but, yeah. but like, I don't know, what is it, like four or five guys on the Islanders are, are all former Devils. So I was like, well, if you, <laughs> you know, if you need anything on, you know, yeah. Kyle Palmieri or Corey Schneider or anything, I, those guys, I've, I've spent years with them. So yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been good. It's one of, I mean, honestly, it's like, you know, we did this kind of, you know, move everybody around. Basically, mm-hmm. it all started with our Rangers writer. Retiring Rick Carpinello, and then you know Art went to the Rangers, and Kevin went to the Islanders, and I'm coming here. Yeah. Like that type of thing wouldn't happen at another publication. There aren't any other publications that cover every team, so right. that, yeah. you know, just being able to be like, hey, yeah, I would, I'd like to go someplace different. Like, I'd have to, you know, find a different job. Whereas this is just <laughs> twenty three thousand miles away. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. But everything's everything's still the same. I still, you know, wear the same hoodie and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Nice. So I mean, he's obviously been giving you some insights on the, the team and whatnot. Mm-hmm. How about just the area in general? I'm sure there's some places that he liked to go eat or um, just things about the area that he's kind of clued you in on. Yeah. You know what? Um, Kevin and Greg Wyshynski from ESPN, they both lived in Campbell when they were here. Nice. And so they were very, like, you should live in Campbell. Mm-hmm. Um, I may eventually. I don't know. I, I think I'm probably going to start out closer to downtown, but that's... Just my like between the last like twenty years basically of living in Alexandria, Virginia, or Manhattan, it's pretty much been a downtown kind of person. Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Campbell's cool. not bad. I lived in Campbell for a few years, and that was back when I was a season ticket holder too. So yeah. took light rail into the games. It was a lot of fun, and then going home afterwards, and then stopping at the bar on the way home <laughs> with my ticket. <laughs> there is like there's so much stuff here. Like I just. I mean, I've I've been I've been to San Francisco before, obviously. Like, you know, been to a Giants game. We mm-hmm. actually covered a football game in the, in that stadium, which was pretty cool. Um, you know, been here a few times and sort of explored the city. But there's like so much, so much like outside the city here that mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, I want to go see you know, I want to go see Redwoods. I want to go see Yosemite. I want to yeah. go do all these things. And it's just like, okay, like <laughs> get there first, yeah. write some, you know, write about the hockey team and worry about that stuff in the, you know, maybe in the summer. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, in speaking about writing about the hockey team, um, your approach to reporting is a lot more analytical. Uh, and I was joking earlier with uh, the fan base that you guys didn't actually kick Kevin Kurz out here. But uh, a lot of them didn't like a lot of the pessimism, which I personally didn't, I didn't mind because you, you kind of want that. You kind of want to have a little bit of the, uh, you know, the realism, right? It's not always, you know, sunshine and rainbows. And kind of, that's what Kevin kind of brought to the table. And that you bring a lot of the analytical side, though. You Something you had said in a, an article. Yeah, you I mean, I think, well, I don't know. 
sometimes like Kevin's from Philly. Like yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there's I I have other friends in the business who are also grew up in Philly, and that's just that's like a. It's kind of like New York City uh, in a way too, just the way that the this you sort of have this identity of of like how we, he grew up reading all the people in Philly and listening to the radio stations in Philly. Mm-hmm. So that's that's you know I don't, I don't I've never really thought of him as being overly pessimistic. I just think of him as being like kind of you know he's he's not going to be afraid to you know tell you how it is. Tell you how it is. Yeah. That's the right way. Yeah. So <laughs> and, and honestly, I don't think I, I so I don't know. I maybe I feel like I, I maybe I get to the same point sometimes, but. I don't know if it just doesn't come off as being as pessimistic. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it doesn't. But um, I mean, I just think that, especially for us at the athletic, I think that's sort of you know you're not, you know, if the team's bad, they're bad. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. if they're you know if they're interesting, they're interesting. Which is you know it's good. Like I mean, a team can be bad and interesting, and then team can be bad and not interesting. So that's you know, <laughs> it can be good and not interesting too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's true too. I I, don't, I haven't really. I haven't covered a team like that before, so I don't know. <laughs> but the, the the Capitals teams were all good, and they were really interesting. Yeah. And and the Devils have been, you know, I, that's one thing. Like right, like this is, I, you know, I'm, the, the Devils and the Sharks are kind of in the same general neighborhood in the big NHL ecosystem. But they're going about it in very different ways, obviously. And so, um, I'm sort of interested to see how this is going to, you know, just going from. Everything that I've written, I feel like everything that I've written over the past three or four years has been the plan, the like, you know, 2025, 2026, yeah. these kids, and when they're all grow up and they think they're going to be great, and they're doing it a different way here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, and I get that, like, some people don't think that that's necessarily, I've, I don't know, I've, I've always thought that, like, you got to go to the bottom before you get to the top, but these guys might have a way to get there. Without doing that, yeah, the, so. the retool where yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah. no, no series. rebuild, no tank, yeah. <laughs> just retool. But I mean, look, they've you know, just from just trying to get to know the team now and the way things are going this year, like, you know, like you know, you look, you've got your four or five core guys, and you've got a, they're. I just feel like this whole thing right now is like until guys like William Eklund and whoever else they draft can yeah. get here, mm-hmm. they're just looking for guys on the margins like just just find a couple of guys this year or next year that can still help whenever the kids are, are ready mm-hmm. and like I don't know like I, I think they've got a like a handful of kind of role guys who are on the margins who might actually be pretty interesting yeah so. nice so actually uh, you brought up a really good question about uh, statistics and what his favorite was. So you want to ask about the, the stats there? Uh, the sure. Like, what's your favorite go-to? Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. We didn't really talk about analytics. Yeah, no. I um, Look, so this this all started for me. Like, I was at NHL.com, and I was covering the Kings in 2012 when they did this crazy thing that yeah. nobody saw coming. And I was like, well, there has to be something to this besides just... Jonathan Quick and a bunch of guys scoring a bunch of goals when they didn't score this much all year, and so one uh, a couple of my friends in um, kind of in in and about the media industry or whatever mm-hmm. um, had just they were like oh well here you know check these things out and they started sending me stories and it was like um, I mean like some of the, the kind of the OG stuff from like way back in the day of. Like this is what Corsi is, and this is what you know. This is what people have been talking about on Edmonton Oilers message boards since like 2005, <laughs> yeah. and and it was still like here it is 2012, and people had never, yeah. it wasn't out there, and so that I mean that really sort of piqued my interest. And now, uh, I think you mentioned before we got on about being a soccer person, and that mm-hmm. like right around the same time the soccer analytics thing was also sort of blossoming, and yeah. so um, yeah, there that was you know. There was not a thing at NHL.com. Like it was not, you know, and so. Uh, so you kind of I, a pioneer. In that well, way. I had to like you had to like convince people like no, like this stuff is good. Like yeah. you have to like, it doesn't it doesn't tell the entire story. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I think most of the battles have been fought and or, or over at this point. Yeah. But you still mm-hmm. get it a little bit here and there, right? Like, team outshoots somebody forty six to eighteen and loses two to one, and people say, oh well, this that stuff doesn't matter. It it does. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but I mean it's it's been interesting to sort of watch it evolve. I don't think the hockey stuff has evolved as quickly as some of the other sports. Um, I I'm one of probably many hockey writers who are jealous of 
the amount of information that is available for say basketball writers <laughs> okay. uh, like we you know there are, I love reading about the NBA because they have access to better public data than we do and they're able to break down things in a little different ways like you asked what my favorite stat I rambled yeah. too much sorry my favorite stat is not available yet I want <laughs> passing stats like I want to be able to you know like I want to be able to just look at a game and figure out you know who completed the most amount of passes who completed passes in the dangerous areas you know the outlet we always you know the defenseman who makes a good first pass mm -hmm. that you know all, all these things that we've talked about for years and years and years all of those arguments will have real data behind them once the tracking data comes online. When is that going to be? Oh, boy. Because we, I don't know if I'm so, uh, opening Pandora talks <laughs> about that, by the at way. At the All-Star Game, yeah. they gave us a presentation. Yeah, I remember that one. everything, yeah. yeah. And the All-Star Game that was here, and that was now three years yeah, ago? Yeah, no, there was an All-Star Game in Columbus in 2015 where there was also a demonstration about the tracking data. I, Whenever I was at NHL.com, I was kind of like a fly on the wall in some of those. Like, I was like... I was the nerd amongst the NHL writers who actually knew what all this stuff was, so they let me sit down on the meetings with SAP. And, um, yeah, that was 2014-15 season. And so, there, look, there's been, like, a few things have happened. Um, they've, like, switched companies a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, they've switched the way that they want to do it. It's not, I, I get, like, they're totally right that it's not as simple as basketball. Like, basketball, you just, you put a chip in the basketball and you put a chip in each jersey and... Yeah. Just, yeah, less people. Like too, the the, the, the biggest thing is like in hockey, you even if you put a chip in, there was the jerseys and the sticks, and the pucks. Um, you know, the puck is in the corner, like along the wall, and there's four guys there, like who has it, who right. doesn't have it. Like some of that stuff was really hard to pick up. Um, well, I think one of the original problems was like line changes, mm -hmm. but that was pretty easy to figure out eventually. Um, and then, like the pandemic happened, yeah, and yeah. like that just sort of got. There's been you know like a labor you know well they didn't have a labor dispute but they almost you know they had like a cba negotiation that this thing just kind of always gets put on the back burner <laughs> uh do you think this will be so. part of the cba negotiations or are players scared of having those advanced stats like affecting their it's, contracts it, it has, there has been it has been weird at times when there have been some players who have said something like that and mm -hmm. it's like no actually like the good players like their numbers are good and they're yeah, and it's right. just another way to like if anything, this is, this is like another way to amplify how how good your numbers are. Or I mean, they're they're like every number is not. It's not. It's either it's not. Not every number is good or bad. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, just right. I don't. I don't think it would be like totally. There, there was there was always this fear, right? That, that there was like you know some like third or fourth line guy who had great Corsi numbers and was suddenly going to be paid like ten million dollars a year <laughs> or something, and that's just not. I think more. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much of it is like just these like little, yeah, yeah. Like you might give, you know, like Justin Williams should have gotten more money than he did. He was one of the mm -hmm. like all time greats at this stuff. Um, that was actually fun. like during the playoffs, the one year actually just like sat down next to him in a stall and was like, uh, "I want to talk to you about Corsi," and he was like, "I don't care about that <laughs> bleep." Uh, and I was like, "No, no, no, I." Uh, you're you're amazing. You have all the amazing numbers. I've been watching you for like six weeks now. I think I got it. And we just started talking about um, wall battles mm -hmm. and how he was just one of the best players on the earth at <laughs> putting his stick in a puck battle and pulling it out and making a pass. Like you just there's there's like three different ways to like win or maybe many different ways to win a battle along the boards. But he was so good at just pulling the puck out of a scrum and then making another pass. And like just those little things led to more shots right yeah, like just yeah. every little you know the, the passes that Eric Carlson makes they lead to more shots mm -hmm. like that's just you know so someday we'll be able to actually really really <laughs> quantify that beyond just the silly number that people don't like that was yeah. I mean the demonstration you got to, I didn't I missed it but you got to go and you got yeah. to see it in person yeah no cool it, it, it was it was really interesting to, to be able to see the the technology and um, I mean, stuff like the how fast the goaltender can react and how fast he moves, like literally miles per hour, uh, from one post to the next yeah. when there's like a cross crease or something, right? Um, I always say when I'm, I have coach uh, coach kids and stuff, so um, I always tell them, you know, you're not going to outskate the puck. So if you can pass the puck mm -hmm. to an open player, you're going to beat somebody who's just trying to skate there, right? right. So um, seeing that actually, like with with numbers behind it, though, in terms of the actual speed, uh, their actual reaction times, um, that was always kind of interesting to see that. 
But I do like what you said that uh, the stat that you would like to see is not there yet, and that yeah. it's it's his passing thing. Because something I've, I've always talked about with him too is you know that the the passing that happens out there it's it's not something that is that shows up in stats, right? And yeah. it's one of those things that you know you, you see. Like you, I love that you brought up Eric Carlson because I'm going to be asking about him a little bit later <laughs> yeah. on. Um, it, that you know he makes that good first pass. Uh, he gets the puck to his teammates. Not really his fault if they can't bury it, and the Sharks aren't exactly the deepest team right now. So um, I think he's uh, providing opportunities, even if it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Um, and hopefully, you know, one day there's those advanced stats, so it does show up on the stat yeah. sheet. But I do um, have one more. Yeah, the one from baseball. Like baseball's numbers are so advanced now that somebody hits the ball in the gap, and within like 30 seconds, they can tell you how far the center fielder ran, how fast he ran. Mm -hmm. And the one, the thing that I love the most is the catch probability. Like they can just, they can tell you that, you know, whoever, you know, name your center fielder was, he had a 13% chance to catch that ball or (laughs) that ball gets caught 13% of the time or that ball gets caught 80% of the time. And like, if we ever had that someday, like for goalies, right? Like that shot gets stopped because there, you know, it's a shot from, 37 feet away with a screen, mm-hmm. uh, one timer, like that shot gets, you know. Right. Being able to determine, because that's like the biggest thing with all, all of the battles now are not necessarily about like Corsi or whatever. It's all like, uh, you know, like expected goals and do we have, do we, are we able to tell what an expected goal should be? Yeah. How much does like the puck moving, how much does the goalie moving, how much does screens, all that stuff go plays into it. And so someday, we will actually be able to quantify all that. And Football has a ranking now, that, that new stat that ranks by the position in the entire league. So, like, here's a cornerback, and he is ranked 35 of 112 of the cornerbacks in the league. Oh, yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. that. So yeah. I can see that happening, too, where they're going to quantify, here's the ninth best right winger yeah. in the NHL yeah. right now at this certain stat or something like that. And that could be good or bad for certain players, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know? <laughs> yeah. But... You brought up uh, expected goals, and I'm curious because what we talked about just now was like with passing and, and all that. Um, for for goaltending, and this is again something that we argue about all the time. Uh, for goaltending, is there a specific stat that you like to look? At? I know expected goals against. My problem is with the word expected. I don't like that someone's trying to predict uh, so much. But I mean, maybe that works for you. I don't know. Um, what's what's your favorite for for goaltenders and saying goalies, if it's a, a good goalie or not? Yeah, I mean. Definitely start with save percentage and like goal saved above average is, is those are kind of the two um, that I look at the most. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, there's look, there are definitely guys, people who say that you should only use the expected numbers, right? Like someone's goal saved above average and someone's expected goals saved above average are two different things. Yeah. The expected one tries to do more to take out like this guy has a great defense playing in front of him mm-hmm. or this guy's only seeing shots from the outside. But, yeah, I mean, like, uh, some of that's uh, you're right. Like, I mean, it's just, it's all, like, I, you try to just look at it all and just try to figure out, like, because it <laughs> sometimes is, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, right? And then but other times you can sort of see, like, well, if some, if this if this one specific stat says that, you know, not, to, I don't know, um, you know, just, like, name a third-line player is, like, is better than Sidney Crosby or Connor McDavid or <laughs> something, well, it's, like, Okay, yeah. but that something's <laughs> something's something might be off there. Yeah. But maybe maybe it's maybe it's just that stat drills down into something very specific and yeah. it's good to know that that's but yeah. So <clears throat> All right. Well, uh moving on from uh stats and whatnot then. I guess uh let's talk about the team in general. I know you just got here, but we're going to put you on the spot. <laughs> um so looking at the Sharks thus far, whatever you've been able to consume. Yeah. Um do you think that this is a playoff team? I mean, I know Aaron says they're on the bubble. I've got my own prediction, which I will share again with you after he <laughs> speaks, because uh, he hasn't heard it yet. But I'm just curious, your thoughts. Is this a playoff team? Um, that's a good question. Uh, let's put it this way. I think they have a better chance. I think they have a chance okay. right in this in this division. Mm-hmm. That's a weird um, coming from the like group of death from the past couple of years uh there was actually i think the it was like the day the day that i found out i was getting the job or the day before day after one of those days i had just randomly looked at dom's like playoff yeah prediction thing and like i think the 
devils and the sharks were within a point or two of each other, oh, and one and the sharks had a thirty six percent chance to make it, and the devils had a fourteen percent chance. It was like, yeah, different different division. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah no, I mean, I like I think that you know, I mean, obviously some of it is tied to the way the goaltending is played, and if if James Reimer can play this way for as much of the season as possible, they're going to have a chance. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I really do like the one, I mean, the one thing that I've just sort of noticed, like they, you know, it's a pretty small sample. I've only seen a, f a few games in person and I'm sort of trying to get caught up. Part of the, like around the Christmas time is going to be my, I'm going to try to go back and watch like all the condensed games from the, yeah, from the first sure, part yeah. of the season. Like just, <laughs> um, but like they, like they play hard. Like they're not, you know, like they're really, you know, some of that stuff is very unquantifiable and it just sort of changes from year to year. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have some, maybe some obvious reasons why this team is different this year than, than the past couple of years. But like, I really like, I think this, if you have competent goaltending or good goaltending and you have a, you know, two or three good defensemen and the team plays hard, you can that's that gives you a chance in this league. I mean, that's there's you know there's different ways to sort of get there, but like yeah. just having, you know, I mean, obviously this is never, never hasn't been a franchise that is like historically <laughs> like oh yeah we're the goaltending and defense team, but yeah. um, but that's kind of seems like where you know they get two or three high end guys up front, a couple of uh, you know good defensemen and a. Even, I mean, even I mean, Aiden Hill has even had his moments, right? I mean, he's. Yeah. I, I, was, I looked today. I think he's at like nine oh three or nine oh four. That's so that's about where you want your uh, <laughs> backup to be. Like, sure, I haven't had that in the last. Two better than Jones. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, 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 I yeah, that's. I've, I, I used to cover a team that would have killed to have a second goal. You had a nine oh three for the past yeah. three years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. So, um, and I'll give you what I was saying. I, I said, and, and I very optimistically and adamantly told our fan base, um, they are a playoff team. Sorry for the clap. They are a playoff team. <laughs> they will not get bounced in the first round. I'm being overly optimistic. I know, but I don't care. And it's out there. It's on record, and I'm not backing down. So, there you go. I have it now. Yeah. So, um, I, I've got a big red um, upside down handprint on my back here from patting myself <laughs> on the back. So uh, I, I've been right for uh, many, many times. I feel that again. So yeah. I can't wait to come back to this in May <laughs> when the season's over. Well, I definitely think like you know, not everybody is sold on Anaheim, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're up there. They've the night that I saw them in person, they looked like vintage Anaheim. They mm -hmm ran the devils out of the gym um mm -hmm. but you know i mean look they, you know they've got a couple of young kids that are great and again the, the goaltending a couple of good defense defensemen and they're in it. um no i mean I, th I think the you know like i mean vegas is going to be there yeah. you know one way or another and they're getting healthy now yeah so right they're like they're up, they're yeah. sort of just kind of hovering there mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be there um yeah no i mean i, I it's it, you know, it's it's been an interesting start to the season for kind of all three California teams. I you know, I remember the days when the whole <laughs> division, dominated. the whole yeah, right, yeah. like the whole it was the whole like the other team players from other teams, especially in the East. Like they mm -hmm. talked about that that California trip. Like, mm -hmm. like man, we're, yeah, we're yeah. like man, we're you know we're gonna come out of that like we're gonna hope we get a, a point or two, and yeah. <laughs> we hope we get out of it you know without too many bumps and bruises, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think it's. Just generally, it's good to see all three of them sort of trending back upwards again. Yeah, nice. That's, uh, last night I said uh, Anaheim's going to fall. Yeah. It's going to be Calgary, Edmonton, Vegas, the top three. Then the middle three is going to be the California team, San Jose, mm -hmm. L.A., Anaheim. And then you're going to see the Kraken and Vancouver <laughs> at the bottom. That's, no. Honestly, that's it, I, right there. like the way things are going, like I don't know... Like there's there are, again there are some analytical reasons to not be so optimistic about Edmonton. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they have you know two of the five best players in the world, so that that gets you somewhere. Um, but they have they've they've been pretty average since that really hot start. Mm -hmm. uh, and Vancouver, man, they've I look I've watched Bruce Boudreau, you know, pull a team from thirtieth place or thirty first. It was thirty back then, so thirtieth mm -hmm. place. Uh, to the playoffs. Now he he started that with after 19 games. I think he took over in Vancouver with 25. So 
and he needed he need, it was he took over in the nineteenth or twentieth game, and it took them to game eighty two to get in. So he needed that yeah. whole runway. So um, you know, this again in this division, they're they're an eight or nine game winning streak away from like maybe being back in it, and yeah. they've got some pretty good players. Yeah. So I want to do a quick little maybe lightning round kind of thing. I'm going to ask about a couple uh, current roster players, and I think you're going to ask about a couple prospects because sure. uh, that's one of the things that uh, Corey likes to do is look at prospects, not just the uh, the players that are on the main roster. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to ask your uh, quick takes on Eric Carlson as well as... He's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hot take. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's... Bam, foul. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and Kevin LeBanc, who um, uh, we've had a, a, f- a fan of the show called Kevin LeBankrupt. Mm. Uh, so I just want to get your take on both of those players. Yeah, um, Eric Carlson is uh, very good. Uh, well, he's definitely. Um, it's interesting. I, my sort of thought, just from like sort of getting caught up, has been wow. He's like having like a really big bounce back season, right? Like he's he struggled and now he's he's good. Mm-hmm. But like one of the things that I um, one of our I'm trying to think who it was definitely Dom and somebody else. I'm gonna screw up and not tell who the other person was. <laughs> that, that they like that combined to do a story on the best um, passing defenseman, or, uh, puck moving defenseman. That mm-hmm. was that was it. And like the, all the data was from last year, and Carlson was. It was basically Roman Yossi and Eric Carlson were <laughs> wow. one, two in almost every category. It was like six different categories, yeah. and I think he was. He was in the top five in let's say four of the six. Or I have to go back and look. But um, and so that was you know right like he didn't. People didn't think he had a very good year last year. Yeah. I mean, look, the points are the, you know, like, what he's, all, he's almost up to a point per game, so that's... And sometimes, the, you know, the points are the points, and you yeah. just you can't, right, like... But he's on the 65-point pace. I looked at it last yeah. night. That's, but, I mean, so, I mean, for me, personally, like, so much of what those guys do, what the defensemen do, is more than... Like, you can, you can have a guy who has 42 points, and he's had an amazing season. You can have a guy who... You know, pass the puck to Connor McDavid on the power play and has yeah. 57 points and was not as good as the guy who was. Right. So I do think that, like, you know, this this team needs Eric Carlson and Brent Burns to to do their thing. And mm-hmm. um, and I think you know, for the most part, I think they've you know they've they've certainly I, I would I think that they're certainly both have been a little bit better than last year. Maybe Carlson, maybe more than a little. So. Uh, and, and before you say something about LeBanc, I want to ask about oh, yeah. um, uh, uh, takeaways uh, or giveaways, I guess, yeah. as a as a defenseman. We see this uh, this stat where we we looked at it beforehand, and we saw that the the players that had the most giveaways were all high end defensemen, yeah. which makes sense to us at least. Um, I'll get your backing on this, hopefully. Uh, that you know they're the <laughs> ones that are constantly trying to move the puck, so it makes sense that it would be taken away from them more often than your run of the mill yeah. defenseman. I think. My maybe personal thing with giveaways and even takeaways to a point, it's like it's from from one rink to another. You don't know what, like in one rink, uh, you know like someone hits. someone intercepting a pass is that that was a giveaway by the defenseman. Yeah. And in other in other rinks, you have to actually like physically take it off of them. Um, I mean, all of those, some of those like hits, giveaways, takeaways. Those those stats are all. I mean, they're counted by a human. Very subjective. Like, and, and, you know, it's like someone watching the game from the press box says, mm-hmm. "Hey, hit 65," or "Hey, take away 88," and like that's that's how those things get recorded. So there's still some, you know, there it was really funny at the very at the very beginning of the year. Um, I mean, Jack Hughes is a guy who like has just is a takeaway machine. Like mm-hmm. he's up there with McDavid and all those guys, and so like through 10 games of the year. He was still leading the NHL in takeaways, and he'd played four periods. And I was like, "Well, <laughs> that's okay." But then I looked at and like, the Devils also had like somebody like at fourth and sixth and eighth and tenth, and it's like, okay, this is clearly, yeah. they're not that good at taking the yeah. puck away from other. But yeah. that was clearly a somebody at the Devils rink was a little too trigger happy with the takeaway, takeaway, takeaway. <laughs> so yeah, but, but yeah, no, ge- just generally speaking, like, yes, Eric Carlson and Brent Burns, and you know, and you, you name any other. You know, Quinn Hughes is going to lead the the Canucks in giveaways and and down the line. So nice. Yeah. Um, um, what about LeBanc? Oh, Kevin LeBanc. Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, Kevin LeBanc. Um, uh, yeah, I talked to him uh, whenever the team was in New York. I was was thinking like, well, if he has like a good game or two, then it'll be like a fun story. Like his because mm-hmm. 
because it was like his first time back. He's since, from since COVID. Yeah, he's, he's from Staten from Island, Island, and I mean, he's done that trip a bunch of times. But yeah. like after COVID, you know, didn't wasn't able to do it last season. He didn't actually, he didn't go home last in the off season. He stayed out here. Um, <clears throat> but man, he I, I I can there there's let me I'm there's Sharks fans who say that he should play higher in the lineup, and there's Sharks fans who say that like. If somebody, <laughs> it's a, yeah, right, right. No, no, I, I get it. it. There's, it's, there's all. It's like, it almost feels like there's always a one guy on every team that's like that. Where it's like, he sh- he's talented enough to play higher in the lineup. He should play higher in the lineup. Why won't the coach play him higher in the lineup? And sometimes the coach is wrong. Other times the coach, you know, wants a very specific thing from him that he won't do, mm-hmm. and that's sort of you know, like, I think I've, I mean, I've, I've only been. You know, kind of paying attention for a few weeks now, and I feel like I've already seen the same mm. quotes from from the coach about yeah, Kevin yeah. Uh, two or three times, three times, four times. Um, so I mean, I get it. Like, I mean, you know, they look. He he did that one year deal thing that was like you know saved the team and gave mm. them basically, and and then they you know they had, rewarded they him. rewarded him yeah. for it. Yeah, you know, and he was you know, he's had some some really good years, and he is that guy. I mean, he just you look at the roster and it's like everything fits. If they had one. Or two more guys who scored, mm-hmm. and like they have those two guys, we know who they are, but they're not, you know, they're not. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, one's yeah. not scoring, and one's not on the team. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, so. Wrong San Jose team. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask about Eklund. So you got to see yeah. Eklund play a lot, so you have some pretty good insight on him. Yeah. He. That's. I mean. So yeah, I did this like story where I just like watched all of Alexander Holtz's shifts mm-hmm. for like twenty three or twenty four games, and just, I mean, it, I don't know, like once or twice a game, it was just like, wow, wait, wait, and so finally by the end of it, I, I was just like, I just messaged one of our two prospect guys, and I was like, this this kid, <laughs> like he's amazing, right? And then, and they're was like, he might, I mean, he was doing all these crazy things, and like. Um, you know, obviously he's like a year younger and hadn't even drafted it. And they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, like he might he might go number one." And there was like a period there. Then that this was you know in November December before anybody really had yeah. any of that figured out. And then the second half of last year, it was like, "Okay, Owen Power is going to go number one." But there was like a there was like a this amount of time where there was like a couple reports where it was like, "Hey, Buffalo really likes William Eklund. He might mm-hmm. go number one." Yeah. And I think there were. It would not surprise me at all. Like this happens every year. We're like, okay, so the uh, you know so so and so goes five, so and so goes six, yeah. so and so goes seven. It would also. I, William Eklund was probably number three on four or five of those teams' boards, but number one or number two was available for them. Yeah. So that's why that's why they didn't take. It was just you know, it's, and you GMs love to tell you this stuff. And after the fact, they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, well, we picked at number eight. And the guy who went at number ten, he was number five on our board. We really liked him, but the guy that went at number eight, he was number four. So we took him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it wouldn't. I mean, it, just, it certainly wouldn't shock me at all if Eklund was like number two or number three for other people. I mean, it sounded like he was number two for for Buffalo. I, I was so. shocked that he fell to the. Show. I was happy that I was screaming yeah. at the TV, <laughs> "Don't screw this up, get Eklund!" I can't believe he fell to number seven. Yeah. That was just unreal. He, um, yeah, he's. I mean, he's. You know, he he does. Look, he's. I mean, he's got some things, right? He's he's small. That's you know, but there are lots of small, great players now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he just he makes passes and makes plays that other guys just can't make. And that's you know whether it's you know this franchise had a guy who was huge who did that for a long time. Now maybe they'll have a guy who's <laughs> small. <laughs> um, yeah, you know he's just I don't you know and it's you know we'll see you know he. He's, it's not like a slam dunk that he's going to be like a ten time All Star or right. you know, you know like where's his ceiling at? Is he like I mean if he just becomes a first line player for a long time, you know that's 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 good. You know if he's not like a quote unquote franchise player, but I mean he certainly has that potential. I mean, I'm yeah. expecting. I'm trying not to get my hopes too high on him. But <laughs> it, it, it'd be like Logan Couture, Timo Meyer, like a guy who's. Make an all-star game here and there, but not like an everyday superstar player that's in the league. Yeah. But he's going to be a very good player. But there's a chance that he could be a superstar player. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I think like sometimes people get too caught up in like, okay, this is what this guy is going to be. And it's all of the things are like percentages. Yeah. Like every every player drafted in the first round has like at least a 1% chance of being like an all-star or a franchise player. Mm-hmm. They just, they do. Yeah. But some guy, you know, Owen Power has like a, 20% chance of being a franchise player or, or higher or whatever. So, 
like, I mean, I think, you know, amongst all the Sharks prospects, obviously his percentages are like franchise player, his is the highest, you know, like, um, you know, multi-time all-star, his is the highest, you know, first, mm-hmm. first line player, all that stuff. So, yeah. All right, what do you think about Ryan Merkley, who's another <laughs> prospect yeah, yeah. here? That wasn't really on the board. I just threw I that mean, out. You no, actually no, read my mind. Yeah. I was going to say, after he's done talking about the next guy, I'm going to ask about Merkley. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. He, um, he was fascinating to me that, that year. Like, I, because there was just, there was so much, there was so much noise, but no, even, even now, there's just, there was, there's always been this smoke around him, but mm-hmm. there's never been, like, like, I would even go, like, go to people and be like, look, what is, what does he do wrong? Like what like are we talking like he just gets angry and he has like a bad temper? Is he are we talking like, you know, stuff that is like way, way off the board that you would just never want that around, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's I still don't think there's been like any like definitive answers. I mean, look, we know he um you know, he has some he definitely has some you know, I, just, I saw there was a play the other night uh, where he like you know smashed his stick into like three pieces like on the ice after a goal, oh, wow. um, but some of that stuff is that's fine. I mean Chris Pronger used to like smash his stick over the goal after you know the, some of that stuff is okay. Too much of it is is not. Right. Um, I think like where they took him, I I thought like I thought it was a good idea. Like I don't you know like mm-hmm. whenever you're whenever you're down there in that part of the draft, like if there's a guy that's you know and again unless you have like. Solid intel that he's done some like yeah. unforgivable things. Yeah. Then that's the guy you take. Like that's the guy you take at twenty. Like you, I mean, that's like, um, you know, he was. It was all you know, like your like prototypical home run swing. So yeah. I, I don't. I mean, he's he's taken a while, right? I mean, I don't think he's um, some of those guys. It's like either like they just they're they're ready at nineteen yeah. or twenty or whatever, yeah. and then other ones that. But I mean, I think he. I think the fact that he just came up and was like. Just okay, like was a, it was kind of like a good step for him. Like he just, you know, he wasn't, he didn't come up and he wasn't really bad. Mm-hmm. He didn't also, but he also didn't come up and like, you know, like luck into a bunch of points that he didn't really deserve or whatever. He was just, he was just okay. And like so, I think there's still a chance for him to be, you know, I don't, maybe he's never going to be a great player, but if he can just be, you know, like a second line, you know, number three or number four defenseman, then yeah, in that draft slot, that's kind of what you're. Okay. It's, it's weird, like, you, you take that guy with the home run swing, right. and you think, like, this guy's either going to be an all-star, or he's going to flame out at 21. Yeah. And maybe he just ends up being a double. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. just, maybe he didn't hit it right. He just, a good yeah. puck-moving defense yeah, yeah, right. on the second power play, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if anything else, I mean, solid trade bait, I would think, for a team that is looking for a guy like that, too. So, it's right. you know, even yeah. if you can't use him and you don't use him, you know, we've got Carlson and Burns, and yes, they're getting older, and that would be a good young replacement, but if they don't go that route, I mean, he could certainly find his way on a different roster, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, last one, Bordelow. Oh, I mean, the news just came out, I don't know if you saw it tonight, yeah. he got COVID. Right. So he's so, missing again. So I drove to Columbus, Ohio from New York City to watch him play. Wow. He did not play. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was weird. Like, I... Like I like to do those trips. I like to like go yeah. see these kids play when they're because it's 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 good. Like first off, it's just fun going to like weird places to watch games. Mm-hmm. But also like you do like develop a relationship with with them. Like whenever you see them, like it just that was something that somebody taught me a long time ago. Like just drive to when I was covering the Caps in DC, someone was just like just drive to Hershey. Those kids will like they they will really be ha- they're really happy to see you whenever mm-hmm. they're that age. They won't be happy to see you whenever they're they're twenty five or thirty. <laughs> but um, so anyway, like I had was originally, I don't, I was gonna go see Michigan play. I can pretty much rattle off almost their entire schedule yeah. because I've been watching. Like I've been trying to figure out a weekend to go see well, the Luke loaded Hughes. right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. So specifically, Luke Hughes, yeah. like for the, with the Devils. But then uh, this job opportunity was sort of percolating, and I was like, well, I don't, I don't want to do too much travel while we're figuring this out. And then as soon as it was gonna happen, it was like, oh well, wait, like. Thomas Bordelow was on that team too, so that'll just two birds yeah. with one stone, right? So, drove to Columbus. Um, it was actually like uh, I moved some stuff to part of the whole moving process. Anyway, um, dropped off some clothes and things with my parents uh, on the way. Um, yeah, but then I get there and like it was so weird because like he he played against Minnesota the weekend before. Um, he did media. They do like college hockey players basically do media one day a week. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was Tuesday night. I talked to. Thomas, I talked to Luke, 
every no nothing didn't no red flags no weird anything and then we show up on you know Friday night and he's not on the roster and I'm like what the heck's going on and like oh they just like an hour ago they announced that he wasn't available and so I was like okay so I was like I start texting people like trying to find out what happened and then um, you know someone from the Sharks said that he was he should be fine for this weekend and then the Michigan coach after the game said uh, he's just not on unava- he's unavailable I don't want to you know going further than that but he'll be he'll be in Plymouth on Sunday mm-hmm. okay fine and then he wasn't yeah. <laughs> because because of because of that so I, I'm guessing that I mean without knowing the the backstory yet I'm I think it's pretty fair to assume that he probably had a positive test on say Thursday or Friday and they were waiting to get the second one to confirm because yeah. yeah. there have been lots of like I won't say lots but there's enough yeah. everybody gets one positive and, and they're waiting positives. yeah false yeah. positives yeah um, and so they wait for the second one so that's I would say that's what happened there, yeah. It's so. just a bummer, man. That's that's two yeah. years in a row. Last know, right? year he yeah. missed it because of his roommate. Right. And now this year he has it. And then just... they were, I mean, he's, you know, he's good. Like, he's, you, you, know, he's he, a... per, you know, is he going to be on the roster next year? You think it'll be another two years, three years for the um, Sharks? I think, I mean, obviously with college players, it's always kind of weird to, just based on when they're, when they're going to sign. I think... Um, I think there's a pretty good chance he's going to sign. I think they want to maybe want to sign him this year, mm-hmm. um, and then you know I think if he signs, the other thing is with with college players too. In this this NHL season, one of the very small benefits from the the weird scheduling with COVID has been there's all these games at the end of the year, mm-hmm. like it basically like. Same thing could happen with William Eklund, where like their season's going to end before the NHL season, so you could bring him back. Maybe he just plays with the Barracuda yeah. to not mess with it. But same deal, like uh, even if Michigan like runs the you know just rolls through the NCAA tournament, which I mean Probably they are. Will. Yeah. <laughs> well, I there are they they are. I, I've referred to them as the Globetrotters a couple yeah. times because they are like when they have everybody there, it's insane. But like those teams, like the, the NCAA tournament is just a weird like they run into one goalie and they're done, right? It's yeah. just a one and done. And they're going to play teams that have like a bunch of twenty-four-year-olds anyway. Yeah. So even if they, even if they, even if Michigan wins the national championship and he signs that night or the next morning, um, there's still going to be games left for the Barracuda and for the Sharks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I think there's a you know if he signs, I think he's got a pretty good chance to. He's certainly going to go to. We're certainly going to be writing about it at training camp about how like he's one of the guys who's going to have a chance to make the team mm-hmm. out of camp. I think so. That's exciting. Nice. Yeah, it really is. Um, I, well, I want to ask about one more prospect actually sure. playing in the AHL right now, uh, Evander Kane. Yeah. <laughs> He's <laughs> kind of a late bloomer. He's a little old. Yeah. He got his first point the other night. <laughs> did, did you see the picture? I did. Did you? That was awesome. Yeah. Did you see the picture? No. They took a picture with the, he took a picture of the team holding the puck uh, up because he had his first okay. AHL point. Yeah, that's right. He didn't play in the AHL yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of cool. He was smiling. All the guys were smiling. The entire team around him. Um, by all accounts, Roy Summer saying, you know, that he doesn't have any problems with him. He's shown up to practice on time. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been a good teammate. The teammates are saying, yeah, he's he's been very helpful. I guess uh, Adam Raska uh, hadn't gotten a point. And he says, you're going to get a goal tonight. And he scored a goal. And so he was really happy about that. He kind of snapped at uh, Peng, uh, Sheng Peng a little bit there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, it seems like he's, uh, he's doing well in the AHL right now from a player personnel uh, personality standpoint if you will so um i don't know i guess kind of your thoughts i i know um you've you've i know you've been following this story so i just kind of give your thoughts um in, in two ways what what should the sharks do what will the sharks do uh it just kind of your thoughts on, on that maybe yeah it's a, i mean you're right i like it feels like f- 30 to 40 percent of all the research I've been doing on <laughs> what's been going on with the team has been consumed by um, like even just even just trying to make like a list of like here's all the like I like I'm, I'm sure Kevin just had like a here's six <laughs> graphs of, of all the backstory of everything that's happened over the past few years just um, yeah I don't I mean given I mean there are it's like spider webs of things there it's, it's if it was just one or two things and they weren't how do I put it um, I don't know I, it's, I mean it's hard to say like there are not I would say like if it was if they were one or two things and they weren't like the big things that they're like the unfor- again like I talk right. about like unforgivable things there are things that should be just absolutely unforgivable um, 
you know, then I think there should be a way for a player to come back from those things if they're not, again, if they're not unforgivable. His, I mean, his thing is like, I, and I feel, feel like I've never, I haven't talked to him about it. I haven't talked to his agent about it yet. I haven't gotten into any of that yet. It just, what I've, you know, heard from other people about how the players in the Sharks roster feel. I mean, look, the, to me, the most, one of the most telling things that have come from all of this is that he said that he doesn't have any problems with his NHL teammates. Mm-hmm. He also says he hasn't talked to any of them, and yeah. they haven't talked to him. Like, that doesn't, that, that doesn't compute. Like, there's no, I mean, you would never, if, you're, if your teammate was going through anything, whatever, like, if, you're, if he was on trial for something, if he was, you know, whatever, like, if you were, if you were good with your teammates, they would check in with you, they yeah. would text you, yeah. like, they would, and so, like, that's, that's not, I mean, one of those things is not, Correct, and it's probably the one about the teammates being okay with him. So, you know, I don't. I, 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 I just from that, just from that little piece of, and then all of the other, you know, just the whole body of work. I guess at this point, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think. It, I don't think he, he will play for the Sharks again, or should yeah. play for the Sharks again. I'm not saying you know if there is another. If there is another team out there that wants to give him a chance, um, I mean, there would to me it would have to be like like a list of like you have to do this and this and this and this and this and maybe he and maybe the some of those things are already happening with mm-hmm. the Barracuda, but like I don't know and, and like part of it too is that like some of the things that he's been accused of are on the unforgivable list for me, mm-hmm. but he's. They're accusations. They're not proven charges. They're right. not, you know. So that's there's still sort of a murky area there. Um, yeah. So what do I think? That, I mean, I think they're, you know, I think they're going to try to exhaust every avenue they can to trade him so that they don't have to buy him out. I think he's got a long way to go before he can play in the NHL again. His but goal he, is to play this yeah. season yeah. in the NHL, yeah. that's according to his agent, his right. statement. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah no, I don't know. That's a yeah. No, no. I mean, I mean, I. It's like I said, it's possible. I, I, I wouldn't. I would be surprised if it was here. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't think. Yeah, I yeah, don't think I it's mean, gonna be San Jose. I think so. he's done here. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think mean, just, I'm in the same boat. I think he's done in San Jose in terms of the Sharks. I think he plays with the Barracuda on the games that he can. I guess he didn't want to travel uh, for whatever reasons, which is fine. But. Um, I think he just kind of showcases that he can be a good teammate again, um, all that. I think the damage is done in San Jose in terms of the big club, though. Whether or not you can be friends with all the guys in the Barracuda, I think uh, the Logan Couture and company, they're over it. I mean, right now, that's the third team that he's burned. Third yeah. Third bridge that he's burned. Winnipeg, Buffalo, and yeah. now San Jose. Well, I, I, it feels weird. Like I, I do think that there were some things earlier in his career that were not entirely his fault. I don't like it's very hard to parse all that out though like what yeah. was like you know what was it how much of that was just him being you know like a young yeah. and, and like what's the word like not hothead but like a just very like just a young kind of bull in a china shop yeah yeah, yeah. immature maybe is the right word but like some of that stuff was not and some of the and some and I do like you know he was treated poorly by the media at times yeah. that can sort of you know have long term effects, so, but like, but again, but that's like early in his career. I just some of the stuff that he's accused of now is, is like I said, that, that's on the list of like, no, nope, that you don't come back from that. Yeah, yeah. I know. But not you know, like you just to me, it's the whole like, um, it's a privilege, not a right. Yeah, kind of thing, and to play in the NHL, so yeah. And, and I'm <clears> curious, <throat> uh, and you don't have to answer it, but. Um, what would be your for how, what's your approach the first time you're going to speak with him? You know, ask him a question. What? How do you even approach <laughs> that? Do you would you even know what question you would ask? I mean, how how would you go about that? Yeah, that's a good question. Because uh, I put myself in those shoes. Because I, I mean, every once in a while I get to ask them questions here and there. It was yeah. mostly over COVID with the Zoom calls and whatnot because I can't actually be there. But you know, trying to think of what is it I can ask these guys that maybe they haven't already heard. Um, mm-hmm. And doesn't come off as you know come off the wrong way or whatever. So um, I have no idea if given that opportunity how I would approach that situation. So it's also curious. it's hard, like especially in this 
type of scenario where it's like, again, some of the stuff that he's accused of doing is like really, really heavy mm-hmm. stuff. Um, you know, I think you just have to like, well, first off, you like, I'm, there's not going to be like a, I'm just going to like walk up to him in the locker room and say, <laughs> yeah. hey, what's up? Um, I'm sure it would have to be like, you have to like talk to the agent ahead of time, or you have to talk to the sharks at a time, or both. Um, and you just have to be like, look, this is, I'm, you know, I'm just going to be as straightforward and, you know, not, I'm not trying to like, you know, my questions are going to be down the middle and you can say what you want to say about them and you can feel how you want to feel about them. But, you know, like this, that's just, that's, this is like a, it's a very specific, well, not specific, it's just in these types of scenarios, it's like you, you have to stay down, you can't like try to like lead him in one way, one direction or the other. It just, that's just not, that doesn't. At least you shouldn't try to do it that way in this scenario. So, I think we had to lighten the mood a little bit here. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's getting heavy. Um, we, we used to do this thing with uh, some of our uh, interviewees where we had a uh, story time. And it's been a while since we've done one. It's been a while since we've done interviews, really. Um, so we're hoping that you have a nice story. Now, you said that you, I, I said beforehand, if you can't think of something, don't worry. We'll just not bother. But he said, I got something. And he said the word Vegas. So <laughs> this should be good, guys. Um, go ahead and take it away you for what, story time here. I, but the one story that I had that involved San Jose, I didn't want to tell it because it's, <laughs> That's okay. it involves Game 7 I, I wrote okay. about it a little bit. I had yeah. a, I had another story about that day and the thing that I carried her anyway. Um, <laughs> so Vegas. Um, yeah, they they moved the uh, NHL awards to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, they used to be in Toronto. I think my first year covering the league it was in Toronto, and then my second year was um, in Vegas. So that that was my first trip to Vegas. I'd never been I'd never been there before, uh, and. It was so. First off, I went for five days, which was yeah. That's the that's the reaction I get every other time. There were there were a bunch of us, a bunch of hockey writers, and we all went for five days. We were like, we're 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 doing it. We're doing the whole thing. <laughs> Boy, like the fourth and night, the fourth night. I think it was the fourth night. We were just like sitting at the table together, like yeah. this is this is a mistake, guys. We <laughs> next year not so much. It's so long. Uh, but so the first time, I mean, the the NHL was trying to do everything they could to like go Vegas, you know. Mm-hmm. The, so um, I interviewed Alex Ovechkin in the real world suite <laughs> um, where I had, had watched that season of the real world and yeah. seen many, many things happen in that suite. Yeah. Um, that was actually, that was a really cool night though. There was like, um, I mean, we, we interviewed him, but then there was like, it was just like a party there in that suite and it was like, uh, Jerome, that was the first time I ever talked to Jerome McGinley oh, wow. and... Um, who else? I think Jeremy Roenick was there, but there were there was like a half dozen all these Hall of Famers. Yeah, yeah, it was just all these guys, all these like great, great players. They were yeah. all just there, like because I think it was, um, yeah, it was going to be Alex's first MVP. Like he was like mm-hmm. the kind of the runaway winner yeah. that year, and so um, yeah, so that was the first night, and then the one, there was another night where um, I probably well I shouldn't tell that part, but there was uh, <laughs> we were we were going we were going to like. A, we're just trying to get into a club, and um, I'll say an- another member of the hockey media okay. um, just started like shouting out, like I know so and so, and I know so and so. He said, "I know Wayne Gretzky." Oh, the bouncer didn't say anything, and so, so finally he said, "I know," and he named like a very prominent player agent, and um, the bouncer was like, "Oh, you know so and so," and so we just. <laughs> We walked walked right into the club. It was the like, agent, wait a minute. The we agent got him. Named, yeah, we named he named he named like Wayne Gretzky and uh, it was Steve Eiserman and he named like three players. And then it was the one agent who like you know knew the owners of the or yeah, so, knew the owner of the bar. So anyway, then the, the to me though the, the the funniest part of the whole the whole weekend though was there was a it was like the third night I think. Uh, where there was like just a handful of us and we're walking you know kind of whatever and we go to come to this club. And we're about to go in, and it you sort of like you just look inside and you can see, and it's it just looks chaotic in there. There's like fire, and just <laughs> there, was, there was literally there was someone like on the bar, like doing the like shooting fire, oh, and yeah, 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 like just. Um, <clears throat> and so we're literally like it's just jam packed. It took like 15 minutes to walk like 15 feet, right? Just walking in there, and then uh, I see another. I see a player from the Washington Capitals, the team that I was covering at the time, walking towards me. And I'm like, oh hey, you know, I know him, you know. 
and he puts his finger right in my chest and he says, Corey, if you ever listen to me one time, do not go in there. <laughs> and I was like, but, but he's like, no, do not go in there. I was like, all right. So he like turned around and walked out and then like maybe, th- well, I guess it would have been like the next season. At that point it was like, I walked up to him and I was like, why, why, did, why did you not want me to go in there? And he was like, I don't think you would have come out alive. <laughs> so he was like, it was, he was like, if it was that crazy for all, they, I guess there was like a handful of the guys on the team that were all in there and they yeah. were all just like, yo, we got to get out of here. This is, <laughs> it was like one of those, yeah. one of those types of places. So, um, yeah, that was our, uh, that was my first time, uh, okay. first time in Vegas, lost a lot of money. Um, that sounds about right. You did, you did get to do a couple of good stories just from the, some cool, uh, and five, cool was it five days or five nights? It was five nights, I think. Yeah. No, 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 I'm sorry. It was it was like five days, with like a four nights and a like a red yeah. eye red eye back. That's still that's, yeah, was, that's was, way too I mean, long. realistically, the the days blend into nights, so it's, it doesn't matter. Was, really. One that's biggest on, day is yes. like a week. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. That's a long time. That was actually my last, uh, the last road game before the pandemic was my oh. was my first it was my first hockey game at that in Vegas. Arena in Vegas yeah. yeah, and I was not like I spent however long they had been in the league at that point a couple of years being mm-hmm. like this isn't this is people <laughs> come on this is not that good come on it's not people talk about like the pregame and everything yeah, yeah. and then we got there and I was like man this <laughs> it was <laughs> like they come out they come out on the ice to the, the, the whatever the John Wick song and it was just like oh okay I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I get it I, it's, it's pretty good <laughs> yeah, I'm still uh, every time with the the playoffs they bring the night out and there's like he's like screaming at the other. I'm just like, this is so corny. I'm sorry. Guys. Come <laughs> yeah. on now, but whatever. That's different though. That's the <laughs> yeah. Playoff. yeah. Fine, I'm I'm sure I, but probably, that's what I'm saying. It'll probably be different now too. Uh, I hope I'm so. Sure they get rid of it. Yeah. Ex- Excalibur, extra. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, um, that almost wraps us up. Because... Well, I do have a question. Oh, okay. Though. You're a big prospect guy. Are mm-hmm. you excited about the new arena that the Barracuda are building? Yeah. Actually, I was just, what was it, like two days ago, I was looking at the, the. Uh, it's like going to be like attached to Shark's Ice, right? Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that They're looks adding pretty cool. one more ice rink plus the arena. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be two more sheets of ice. So oh. six total, I believe, for that. Place. Yeah, it'll be six. So it's the largest um, facility I, in terms of um, square footage of ice mm-hmm. available in Northern California. Or, no, sorry, Northern uh, America. Jeez, okay, California. Yeah. yeah, Northern California. Yeah, yeah. That was I was like my. Um, I got to do when I was at NHL.com. I got to go do like just some weird, random, fun stories. Like um, whenever Sidney Crosby and Nathan McKinnon played each other for the first time in the mm-hmm. NHL, I watched the game with Sid and Nate's. They had they both had like a youth coach mm-hmm. oh, in Cole yeah. Harbor, and so I there was there's one sports bar in Cole Harbor and in, in Nova <laughs> Scotia, and so it was it was me and Nate's coach and Sid's coach and one other it was like the four of us just sitting there watching the game. Unreal. That's awesome. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, Did you come up with that story like that idea? Oh, I think I can't remember if I came up with the idea. I think I came up with the idea to go to no to Cole Harbor. Mm-hmm. Or it was one of the other. There was basically, it was like two different things. It was like, we need to send someone to Cole Harbor to do a story on Cole Harbor. Like, this yeah. is just, it's literally a town of 30,000 people with a Walmart. And it's, if you didn't know about this. And that's, I mean, that, that was like the first thing I saw when I got there. I was like, oh, okay, this is the story. Like, welcome to Nova, uh, welcome to Cole Harbor, home of Sidney Crosby. It's in the, the like, the, the grass yeah. of the Walmart. Like it's, it's 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 where it is. Like it's in the you know right right by the road. Did they add Nathan McKinnon to it? Well, that that was the whole that was part of that story. Was like, yeah. well, what what is what does Nate need to do like to get onto the you know because any other any other you know town in yeah. Canada, he's already you know number one pick like yeah. you know, whatever he's been like the runner up MVP a couple times, but. Mm-hmm. The town there, you gotta like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a big sign that says "Home of Sidney Crosby," and then there's like a board nailed into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. I uh, there, this is completely off topic, but I um, have like a summer house in in Northeast Ohio, mm-hmm. and the one town there it's it's called Ashtabula, Ohio. That most people have not heard of it, but mm-hmm. you drive into the drive in on either side of the town, and the sign says. Welcome to Asheville, Ohio, home of Urban Meyer, Ohio State national champion coach. And then there's another person below it who's like a uh, Pulitzer Prize winning author or something. It's like, oh yeah, and this person too, but mostly Urban Meyer. You know, like it's typical like small town yeah, Ohio yeah. or 
rust belt or whatever. But, yeah, that's funny. Um, <laughs> was, oh, yeah. So that whole thing about the that was all coming back to the fact that I was here for like a week in yeah. twenty during the twenty fourteen fifteen season. Um, that was not my idea. Somebody just one of my, one of my uh, bosses at NHL.com was like, "Hey, um, <clears throat> that, that that was the year that there wasn't the outdoor game." I think uh, that was probably yeah. <clears throat> the one that, that they played the Kings. Remember, yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Yeah. I think I think that was so. Anyway, normally those types of stories where we would do something like mm-hmm. tied to an outdoor game or some big event. So it was basically just they were like, "Hey, do you want to go to San Jose for a few days and write about the fact that they have like the biggest rec league in the country?" And I was like, "Yes, absolutely, <laughs> I do." Like I, would, I had just spent a couple weeks there, and the last previous spring, I was like, "Yes, I love it." So, yeah, that was. Uh, Oh, it was it was a little weird at first. I got there, I got here, and I was like, "Okay, let's wait. Do I just like start talking to random people <laughs> like as they're?" And that's pretty much what I did. Like yeah. for four days, like I talked to the guy who worked for the Sharks, who like kind of had he like played in it, but he also had like a hand in the scheduling and mm-hmm. everything. Oh, Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Is he still do that? I think he's still doing. Okay. I actually, I don't play <laughs> there anymore, okay. but he was the guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I talked to Tyler, and then it was just pretty much like they had. I think he had like showed me like the website where you could sort of find like some of the better players. Like there was like some college kids and people who showed up for like the, at the very top of the level. Yeah. But it was mostly just like I'm just gonna go over there and just literally I was literally just standing like watching people wheel out their gear over yeah. and over and just be like, no, no. And I, it was just it was complete. I mean, I probably talked to I don't know 25 or 30 people. And ended up getting like just it was just, all I needed was like three or four like really cool yeah. stories, and that was just like we actually <clears> looked <throat> at that article because um, he's like, oh, he wrote about this. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And we looked at it, and there's you know you're saying there's guys from from Canada coming over uh, working in you know, tech with mm-hmm. Cisco and everything else. So yeah, you must have hit a few of those guys with the with the 25 that you were. <laughs> you, you yeah, stopped. yeah, that was it was definitely like um, that was it was like there was like groups of people. It was like people who just grew up here and were just they you know didn't know what a hockey puck looked like until the sharks came and then mm-hmm. suddenly it was like hey let's do let's try this it was there was people who like their kids were really into it so they wanted to try it yeah. but i i think like that was kind of like the i don't say the driving force behind it but the thing that really kind of gave it legs was just all the people that had moved here from other places that were like hey we want to we still want to play hockey like yeah. there was like you know these guys like 55 year old guy from canada like should I bring my hockey bag with me yeah. to San Jose or not? And it turns out, like, yes, you should. And yeah. You can play in, you know, this crazy league that has, like, 23 levels or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, so. Step outside yeah. and we'll go for a circle here. Uh, get good weather. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Nice. yeah. Unless you're playing in the adult league, in which case you step outside at about 1230 <laughs> at night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in the morning, I guess you could say. But, um, yeah, I've done many, many nights where our game started at 1145. Ugh. And uh, they close the bar. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're gotten all our gear off, everything in the car. Walk out there. I'm oh, sorry, we're we're done. Really, really, guys, come on. But anyway, uh, see, I told you we lighten the mood. Right, that's all we yes. need to do. Is just, <laughs> yes. There you go. So um, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, send a little message uh, to the fans. Before we do, I want to ask the fans to put in comments uh, places that uh, Corey needs to check out. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a place to eat, place to shop. A uh, place to just hang out, party. What I don't know anything. What what other things should they tell him? Yeah, just restaurants, bars, any, anything that you do before the game, um, or any places that you like that's fairly local to downtown, and what you like about it, and what he should check out. I had okay. lunch at. I I got off the plane and I dropped off my bag at the hotel and I went straight to Levick. So that was like nice. Yeah. <laughs> I it's funny like the when I was here a few weeks ago I, I um, I was just I just was like really craving. OJ's like that's all that's all like yeah. that was whenever that was like whenever I came here in, in 2014 it was like it was Pierre Lebrun and Kevin and a couple of other guys and we would just we would go went to OJ's for lunch like like that was like the pregame meal pretty yeah. much and there was even there were shark guys there one day like Jumbo was in there huh. and Pavelski was in there like mm-hmm. I mean, this is like oh okay yeah like this is you know you don't really see that in there maybe in other NHL cities where like nobody knows yeah. who they are yeah. well, <laughs> the, well I, people knew who jo- yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. people knew who Joe Thornton was but no but yeah just like the idea of like oh yeah there's like you know actually I think they might have been in there on the, after a practice that wasn't oh, okay. a game day but yeah. we're still was like, yeah so anyway those were yeah those two places were from literally like the second day I ever showed up here was like nice. oh yeah, yeah OJ's and you know and now that I know there's like several yeah I was walking uh, right by there, actually, by, I think it's the Hilton that's over there. 
this was years ago, and the Sharks were playing, I think, the next night. And I'm sitting there, and, and we're crossing the street, and there's this guy I'm looking at. I'm like, God, he looks familiar. He was, and he wasn't a Shark player. I'm like, you know you, you know, you see somebody that's a professional athlete. Yeah. You know they're a professional athlete. Like, you don't know what sport. You, you just tell, like, they have a certain look. They dress really nice. They're definitely in, like, ridiculous shape. He crossed the street, and I go, that was Sean Thornton of the Boston <laughs> Bruins. And I'm like, yeah. why is he here? And I'm like, because the Sharks are playing someone else. I'm like, oh, they're playing the Bruins in like three nights, but the Bruins had a huge break, so they flew in early. So I was like, after he got across the street, I'm like, oh, that that was Sean Thornton. That's yeah. that's. Yeah. I just, you know, I knew a lot of players, so I was like, oh, there was I a feel stupid. There was definitely a hotel like that in D.C. over in Georgetown where, if I was just like out, whatever it was like, you know, they they played on a Friday night and it was like Thursday night, I was just out getting pizza or whatever. Yeah. And down in Georgetown, it would be like. Just walking down the street and be like, "Oh, hey, there's PK Subban," <laughs> but like they were playing the Canadians wow. the next night. You yep. know, it was like because everybody stayed at that one hotel. But yeah. So. so I'm gonna throw out. So you guys can't put it in the comments. I'm gonna throw out uh, Berticelli's, uh gourmet delicatessen, La Villa, La Villa's gourmet it's in downtown Willow Glen. Okay. Yeah. So That's definitely okay. check that one out. Uh, you actually might see some sharks players uh, there because they Brent do Burns sharks. goes there a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen him. Uh, jog by before as I was there. <laughs> Ravioli killer, uh, meatballs killer, and then the Chris combo. You can't you can't stay here without trying to Chris combo. So there you go. Um, okay, so again, put the uh, in the comments whatever you think uh, he'd be interested in. So that's awesome. Go ahead and uh, just if you have any message for them, uh, oh. let them know now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm really like I'm just really excited. Like this is. I tried to explain this to someone before, like I've, in this profession, you don't really get the opportunity to like leave a good job. Mm -hmm. Like you, you get a good job and you're like, oh, I, I got yeah. it, I got it, I got it, I got it, right? So like covering the devils was a good job for me. Like it was just all of these different factors, like where I was living and the team is like on the way up and all mm -hmm. of a sudden it was like, it was a good job. So like, I just had never been in a position before where it was like, Oh, I could leave this and go to another good job, like, and then <laughs> like I could actually like pick. And so, um, yeah, I was just like to me like that's like, yeah, like I actually have the a chance to like do something different, and it's going to be like a it's just a, a different kind of challenge for me personally, just mm -hmm. yeah. like coming to a completely different place and starting over a little bit, right? But like just the whole, just from the times that I've been here before, like. Um, and I know some. There's been some writing about the attendance this year and some mm -hmm. of the COVID-related right. things, or whatever. But like, man, even like even that that game that the Devils played here the other a few weeks ago on Saturday night, like we had played or they you know they'd been to Anaheim and LA and here and just the place was it just popped like it was like oh yeah like this is like you know it's like a Saturday night and you know like this is this is what a hockey crowd's supposed to be yeah. and like. Those those playoff games were just epic here. Like yeah. it was just you know just crazy atmosphere. Like just all that stuff. And like I mean I guess like some like old grizzled sports writers don't care about that stuff. But like <laughs> like I, I I get into like I mean it's like the good atmosphere thing matters to me. Like I, I like having like just you know you, it's just you just feel it like whenever you're yeah. there or, you know wherever like the the you know, I, I lived in Charlotte for one year and it was like the Panthers went fifteen and one and they just. The whole city went from like not even caring about football to being like just everybody had a Cam yeah. Newton jersey on on, on the, the Friday before the championship game, like mm -hmm. just that kind of stuff. Like those those are the things that like I mean I'm still like a sports fan, I'm sports nut, right? Like, yeah. this, wouldn't do this other. So like those are the types of things that like they kind of fuel me to want to do this. So like that's I'm excited. Yeah. So you you I mean you covered the Capitals too during some of their epic runs. I feel like Washington is always. Back when the Sharks were good with Thornton and everyone, the sh that Washington was the East Coast version of the Sharks. Oh yeah, I heard that a lot. Person, right? Yeah, that was like whenever the two teams were like, they were the two most fun teams to watch in the yeah. league, right? Like they were, you know, it was definitely like, and they were both trying to win. You know, like the, neither had had won yet, and that was, yeah, it's weird that that like that was <laughs> the Sharks of the East or the Caps of the West. Those that, that was definitely like a thing. Yeah, those were uh, those were fun teams. Uh, sure. You've been to a bunch of playoff games for other teams and other arenas. Like, how does we always hear how the San Jose Arena is pretty loud and boisterous? You were just talking about it, so I was curious: is it really like? Is there really a difference between playoff games in San Jose versus other? 
places? Yeah, I mean, there's. I think there are places like. Um, I'm trying to think. Probably like I've like I've told people, yeah, that I so I I did in 2010 the Canadians beat the Capitals, and then they beat the Penguins, mm-hmm. and so I covered the Capitals thing just for in DC. But then as maybe like a sign of things to come, NHL.com had asked me to go cover the second round for them too because they didn't have enough writers at that point. And so like those two rounds, that was like a month basically. And like I've I've told people like the second round games in Montreal were louder than any I've I've covered multiple game sevens in the Stanley Cup finals mm-hmm. and those those second round games in Montreal were still the loudest craziest wow. games I mean there were I mean Chicago's great um the new Pittsburgh arena is is much like it sort of became better it was yeah. like I, those games the game I mean I grew up going to games at the, at the old igloo but it was never like oh this is one of the loudest craziest arenas in the league um but yeah, of all the like, the ones out here, San Jose was, you know, the one, the one, uh, the games in Anaheim when it was Anaheim versus LA, mm-hmm. those were fun yeah. because it was like three thousand Kings fans in there, and it yeah. felt like a just a just a crazy like soccer atmosphere. Yeah, like they were going back and forth to each other, um, but not like when they, those two teams played in LA. It wasn't there wasn't three thousand ducks. So anyway, but yeah, no, I just. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, yeah, no, that's San Jose. I mean, I'm trying to think of all the other, like, yeah, what's pretty loud in Washington. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, it's funny, I've only, I've only, I only covered, uh, you know, basically two playoff games in New Jersey. <laughs> like, they're, they, they start, like, I started there in February of 2018, and they yeah. made the playoffs in 2018. And those two games against Tampa were, I mean, the place was, it was amazing. It was mm-hmm. like, I'd never heard anything you know and so like you like I would you would talk to the players about it like a year or two later and it was like yeah we want that like that's you know, like those guys like those guys were just they were like oh my god like that we, we need this place to be like that again and like that's what you get whenever you actually get you know if they if you any team puts together two or three runs to the playoffs and, and then just everything just sort of builds and builds and yeah so yeah, it's awesome to hear that a lot uh, from uh, the Sharks players too. Like uh, of years past, seeing yeah. that you guys actually do make a difference. You know, like how loud the building is, it does feel less. So, uh, really interesting to hear that that works uh, everywhere. <laughs> apparently, yeah. so yeah. awesome. Um, again, thank you so much for stopping by, Corey. Gave yeah. us a ton of your time, and yeah. we do appreciate it. Um, guys, if you are not subscribed to the Athletic, please check that out right now for the cost of a uh, lowly cup of coffee. Um, you can, uh, you know, get the content that not just from Corey, but from everybody that writes there. You yeah. mentioned Pierre LeBron and uh, Dom Lashinsky. Lashizen? Oh Le man, Shizen? if I if I don't if I don't say Le- that, Sh- something. Yeah. There's a yeah. guy there named Dom. I just Dom. call him Dom L. He's, he's, always been Dom. he's awesome Dom. too. So check him all. And of course, if you really did like Kevin Kurz and you feel bad for uh, kicking him out, uh, you can read his <laughs> stuff uh, for the Islanders oh, as well. Yeah, so there again, it's, it's open for all of the content for the Athletic. So definitely check that out. Uh, certainly worth the price. I think it's still, is it still on sale? The, the might be for Christmas. It right might now. be for Christmas. Yeah. Um, get it as a gift for someone else as well. Who knows? Uh, so anyway, I want to say again, thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. all your insights. Thanks Spend for having time. me. Yeah. We'll have to do it again. Um, later maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe later on the yeah, season sure. when uh, you've got a little more um, <laughs> under your belt and you can really give us back and say, you know what, I was really wrong about this. Because... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knows, right? So anyway, all right, cool. Uh, Well, for uh, Corey and for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. We will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.